Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemis. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. A new COVID-19 case in the community raises concern. Contact tracing is underway. Also tonight, some workers won't have Christmas lights. They won't have lights. And as IPI flounders, all signs point to a collapse. In sports, a look at the Toss You to Table program, now in its second year. Stay with us. These stories and more are next. Great customer rep. Always willing to go above and beyond for his customers. I truly hope she noticed. She gets noticed at work since I do see she she is a hard worker. A few technician that visited my home was great and helpful. Thank you. Thank you. You really keep it up. Your customer service is always very good. Awesome customer service with great technicians that are really helpful. Thank you so much, Sherlyn and Docomo Pacific. That's so sweet. <laughs> it feels good to see this kind of messages because, uh, you know, we try our best to do customer service. We make sure that we will 100% uh, solve the issues. For all those people that are seeking assistance. I just want my customers happy. And help them out each and every day. I would want to go to a place with someone that's just like me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Come to Docomo and uh, you'll feel like you're at home. Across the nation, more and more people are driving under the influence of drugs. The CNMI Department of Public Safety would like to remind you to drive safe this holiday season. Do not drive while under the influence of marijuana, opioids, methamphetamines, or other potentially impairing drugs, including prescription and over-the-counter medication. These drugs can impair your driving and can put you and others in harm's way. Be responsible this holiday season. It's not just your life at risk, but the lives of the people around you. Don't let one poor choice ruin the holidays for you or your loved ones. Drive safe this holiday season. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the CNMI Department of Public Safety. Remember, if you feel different, you drive different. those going out each day, doing what they can to hold us all together. We're here to help those helping us all by keeping our lights on. Half a day, Tirawami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Wednesday, December 23rd, 2020. A hospital employee has tested positive for COVID-19. Take a listen.
On Tuesday, December 22nd, two individuals were tested positive for COVID-19, one of them a respiratory therapist from the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation. The healthcare worker was recently on official travel as a medical escort flying to Hawaii and the U.S. mainland. The individual is considered a critical essential worker who tested negative upon arrival and was released for self-quarantine. The worker was tested positive on the fifth day testing and was immediately transported to the isolation area. According to CHCC, no one is exempt from quarantine. Self-quarantine means being at their choice of lodging but with limited movements and being barred from attending any form of congregate setting such as restaurants, bars, church and more. CHCC assures the public that contact tracing has begun and all those who are close contacts to the individuals have also been transported to the designated isolation area. While IPI was appearing yesterday in front of the CCC, CUC was disconnecting power to the company barracks. It looks like a dark Christmas for employees brought from thousands of miles away and now stuck on Saipan. Water no more, power no more. Yes. Maybe everybody room too much hot. Yeah, no sleeping. Maybe shower cannot. No, no water. These are the rooms of the IPI barracks just off of Middle Road. Turkish H2B workers live here, also Italian workers, although we didn't see the Italians here today. And next door are Taiwanese workers. The men aren't working, though. They are waiting, waiting for back pay and tickets home. And they say that CUC cut off power yesterday. Trash collection and cleaning has been suspended. There is exposed wiring in the building and lots of hazards. Turks added a little fuel into a backup generator yesterday, and that's why you see a few lights here in the hallway flickering. Yesterday night time, 11.30, gas finished, Matai, power finished, water finished, Wi-Fi finished, uh, because nothing electrical now. Waiting, only waiting, IPI, paychecks waiting, electrical finished, water now. Internet, how, many no. pay, how many paychecks do they owe you? Six paychecks. Turkish team, six paychecks. The Turks came here one year ago on H-2B visas. The promises made were $3,000 per month, transportation, paid leave home after six months, along with Turkish food, internet, and some basics. Today, the guys are just waiting on broken promises, living in squalor, getting more and more desperate by the day. Sinks are rusted out, doors off their hinges, Outside, the guys are gathered and say each day the problems become worse. Really, big problem. All local people, we want uh, sent looking to Christmas Day night. Not giving money, not electrical, not water, not Wi-Fi. Christmas Day night, everybody protests going night time. Not coming here. Waiting outside, waiting outside stay. Really, big problem. Everybody psychology up now full. Why IPI management not personal coming? Okay, Turkish team giving money. What time? Giving when? When date give? Nothing, not coming. Only stay, only waiting here. Uh, yesterday electrical, water, Wi-Fi, finish, <laughs> waiting, psychology up now full, everybody tired, really tired, everybody family have, children have, waiting money, three months. Last week power was cut off at Vescor Village on Capitol Hill, another apartment complex used by IPI for housing employees. Meanwhile, Don Brown, the current CEO for IPI, spoke yesterday to the Commonwealth Casino Commission. He says IPI is currently involved in 29 court cases and is negotiating a loan for past due payrolls. The commission also heard that IPI's attorney may be leaving next month due to non-payment. We did sign an agreement just for the payroll, so that is, should be deposited as had the other three or four times we took out a loan for that, should be deposited, hopefully was supposed to be deposited today so we could cut checks and get them to people before Christmas. 
So that's pay periods 21 through 26, that's six pay, pay periods, but you know, then there's pay period 27, which is right around the corner. Can I get this uh, uh, correct? You said IPI will pay all outstanding pay period 21 and 26 and uh, before Christmas, Christmas is on Friday? Yeah, well, the I haven't audited it yet, but that was the funds, the schedules that we sent in and uh, verified <coughs> by payroll and HR. It's about $2.2 million to come up with the current payroll pay to everybody, yes. As far as the housing is concerned, you know, there's another issue with that too, power and water. When we pay those things, quite possibly we'll get a contempt charge again uh, because there are other charges that the court has asked us to pay. And we did that last time and, you know, got bounced on that. So it's, it's going to be curious how that's going to play out. You know, we care about humanitarian issues. And, uh, you know, since the beginning we said we won't charge for power. We won't do, you know, to, at the point where if we pay for those things, we might subject ourselves to a problem. So hence we have a generator. So we're working very diligently to get Money for attorney dots, attorney for the court, uh, excuse me, money for the courts, money for the employees, money for the water, money for the power, money for the ex employees, yeah. money for the vendors. You know, the list goes on and on and on. It's kind of well documented. Mr. Brown, sorry for my uh, ignorance here, but how did you as a CEO offer an organization when you have no knowledge of where your money is going to come from? Well, I don't understand that if I was CEO, I would be very nervous every day. No, of course I'm nervous every day. Since in the last six months, after I'm 61 years old, 41 years in the casino business, I had a speeding ticket 40 years ago, 40 and a 25, which I paid. I got a parking ticket in Washington, D.C. in 2018, which I paid right away. Other than that, we know, we know I've never been in court, so yes, I, it's until I arrived here. So yes, I, I understand it's very serious. Now, we are working with a lender. First time I'm involved with that directly. Now we've gotten loans, which I've executed, but this is due diligence. It's, it's a little bit different. It's very, uh, very time consuming, very intense. This is gaming. It's a privilege. If you're not financially suitable, you shouldn't be holding on to the license. And this is what pisses us off. You know, since, since you uh, you did this in the very beginning, you understand that we've been very patient, we've been working with IPI, you know, to try to make sure this works, but enough is enough. Mr. Brown, you coming to this meetings, telling us that you have to get a loan to pay payrolls and what are the obligations. Is it fair for me to say that IPI is broke? Mr. Commissioner, this is not, it might be unusual for St. Amai, but it's not unusual. The, the hospitality, the hospitality world, 700 million, 800 million, a billion dollar loan they're taking to float their business. Now they have the ability to do that. Loans while you're closed and you have no income is, is very common. It's just difficult for us to secure a loan plus the license is in jeopardy. So we're working with a lender now that understands full well, and it won't be, you know, 10 million, 20 million. It'll be enough for us to at least sustain and we'll, until we can get over. With the vaccine on island, there is renewed hope for tourism. Does that mean the casino can survive? With stranded workers, payless paydays, and a new ban on hiring workers, there are many signs that Imperial Pacific is on the verge of collapse. Governor Torres speaks on the industry. Do you think the, that IPI survives this? What's your administration doing to address the, the non-payment of, of not just taxes, but license fees and, and uh, payments to workers who are stuck here? Some of the CWs have expired. They don't have tickets home. We, we, we see sort of just a lot of unknowns in that in, in that area. What, what do you think? So, so the first thing is, you know, we want to help every company here in the CNMI. Uh, being a guy with IPI, they have obligations that they need to meet in order for us to move forward in the right direction. I know that they're having some issues. Uh, we see it, we hear it. Uh, so 
we are working with them in, in making sure that in order for them to move forward, they need to address the pending issues. And of course, like what you said, taxes, and the, of course, the labor force, uh, the construction, um, all of that needs to be addressed before having that industry back online. Has anyone from IPI, we hear the name Mr. G, and we hear um, um, the, the, the mother who is here, or, um, but any of those principal players, have any of them back-channeled to you or the administration and said, hey, look, we're going to take care of these obligations, we're going to make this successful, or is it really an arm's length kind of relationship at this point? Yeah, there's, I haven't got any communication with either of them. Um, more of the communication is through CCC uh, on what they're being updated uh, from them. Uh, and then once in a while, any update from the Lottery Commission. Um, again, that's just what we see uh, and what we hear out in the media. But in terms of any direct, I have not gotten any direct communication with them. Okay. Is that disappointing to you that, that you haven't gotten any private assurances or is it just the way that it should be? Well, I would like to see if there's any update. Um, you know, since even before COVID, a lot of their management has shifted. So I don't know who's the executive order. I haven't met with them uh, on any update on, on who they are or their new organization. So I think uh, I'll be happy to see the new organization, um, happy to see new approach and perhaps uh, what kind of arrangement that they need to do. Uh, I know that they've been working with uh, Secretary of Finance. Um, I don't know specifically who they're meeting, uh, but I know that they're trying to address those concerns. Coming up, women leadership becoming a trend here in the CNMI. More details after the break. PHI Pharmacy in Gofadahi, Ihinim Lomu. Our complete line of pharmaceuticals and lowest prices ensure you get the treatment that you deserve. Our compassionate, friendly, multilingual staff will take the time to get to know you, explain your medications to you, and answer any questions that you may have. Nere eyor sumaye uhalweres ren, kuchu weyor safeye emwal ebalisiu klalyamweres. Inumina ninyong gamot. Ayon sa inyoriseta ng inyong doktor at alinsunod sa bilin ng inyong pharmaceutical. We accept most insurance, but in case you don't have coverage, we offer cost-effective generic drugs. PHI Pharmacy, Pharmacy your lifelong partner in health. PHI, the pharmacy you can trust. A meal replacement smoothie is a great way to keep your fitness goals on track during the holiday season and they taste great, fast and easy. The December smoothie of the month is Minty Java Choco Chip and it's just $5. Check out the Shake Cafe Gold's Gym, Garapin. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. Another bill for financial assistance for 2021 has passed U.S. Congress. The bill, which is loaded with Mariana's benefits, now sits with President Trump. 
It's a 5,000-page bill that appropriates $908 billion for COVID relief in the U.S. Congressman Gregorio Kalili Sablon says the bill is loaded with benefits for the Marianas and that unemployed workers can now breathe a little easier. The bill includes a second round of impact payments, better known as stimulus checks. Businesses and nonprofit organizations will also have a second opportunity for the PPP loan. If signed by the president, the pandemic unemployment assistance will also be extended until April 2021. The federal pandemic unemployment compensation program will also restart, this time only $300 a week. That will run until March of next year. According to Kilili, CW workers will now be eligible for PUA and FPUC benefits. Kilili says he hopes this will be enough to reinstate everyone who lost food stamps in October and had their benefits cut. The COVID relief also provides new funding for schools. The Sinai public school system is set to receive $68.7 million, which allows PSS teachers, support staff, and school administration to be paid with federal money. Now addressing the ongoing pandemic, the bill will spend more than $56 billion on health care. But reports indicate that Trump is criticizing the bill. There are no signs that he wants to veto the bill, but he does want to make some amendments. Governor Torres has chosen a female to serve as the CNMI's public auditor. All she needs is one more confirmation from the legislature. Take a listen. The appointment of Kina Borja Peter was confirmed by the House of Representatives on Tuesday as the new public auditor of the CNMI. 18 members voted yes, while Representative Marco Peter, her husband, was excused. Peter just recently came back home in July and says she is grateful for this opportunity. I'm glad to be back. This is an amazing opportunity. Um, it's actually an opportunity for me to apply everything that I've learned, um, all the exposure that I've received to come back and help and serve the same way, and also um, do so with the public trust. Peter is a graduate of the University of Portland with a bachelor's degree in business administration, major in accounting. She is also a Washington licensed certified public accountant. Peter speaks on what her priorities will be once she steps into office. We're going to start looking at risk-based approach, uh, do a risk assessment with um, the financial um, audits that we've received, assess internal controls, try to set up um, and define internal controls that will help prevent and detect um, fraud, uh, waste, and abuse with the government resources. Um, and also, one of the things that um, I, I have interest in is uh, doing a digital transformation with um, our office just to get more um, efficiency and productivity. Now, Peter awaits the Senate's confirmation to officially become the CNMI's first female public auditor. She will be replacing Michael Pai, who served the CNMI for 12 years. Congratulations and good luck. All right, coming up in the sports report, we've got more fishy stories. Buy one, get one free for the off-road adventure at Mariana's Trekking. Come ride our side-by-sides at our best price ever and experience a great 90-minute trail ride. Rain or shine, hopefully rain. Book now at Mariana's Trekking, Saturdays and Sundays by reservation. Call 323-8735 or book at marianastrekking.com. Come take your turn at the most unique restaurant on Saipan. Daily lunch specials are just $9.99 and come with super salad. Happy hour starts at 5 o'clock. And dinner features spectacular sunsets and great food at reasonable prices. 360 can be chartered for parties, events, birthdays, and weddings. Make it special. Make it 360. The best food and view all the way around.
Thank you for being here with us. For finding ways to keep things happening. For making things feel a lot better. Thank you. Energize, realize, feel so good just to be alive. Time's a gift, my time is free. I can spend it on you, you can spend it on me. I can say you'll be blown away by the change you see, you see me. Thank you for staying strong with us. And for us. Thank you for always connecting. For keeping us together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for reminding us that despite this distance, we are still better together. Dokomo Pacific. Better together. Tonight, sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Buenas sports fans. When as sports fans, you know, fishing can be sports, it can be recreation, can be subsistence living, you know. Whatever the case, first, got to get your line in the water. The Saipan Fishermen's Association set up a program for students. It's called Tossy to Table. Tossy means a lot, you know, it's good for the youth to learn about the fishing and also many other outreach programs we have here in Ireland. Uh, when I joined, I honestly didn't have much experience, but as we have my weekly meetings, it, uh, I gained a lot of knowledge through uh, from an example would be uh, boating safety, where they talk about different flares. That is one thing I've learned so far. Wayne Pangalinen heads this program for high school students. We're just about under two years at the moment. Um, and we started with the support of the Saipan Fishermen's Association. We operated on uh, what we call the Community Outreach Program, the COP, through SFA. Uh, we started with the six, six weeks program, and then it evolved into something greater. Thanks to Coral Reef Guam, who donated a boat that was raffled off during the Mahi Derby, the Tasi to Table program was able to get substantial funding. With, without the, the donation from Mr. Tempers on Coral Reef Bob, and Mr. Kobashi from Mercury, we wouldn't have been able to, to do this. We wouldn't have been able to raise funds to help these kids out with this program. Right now, the program is serving 50 students in four public high schools. Marinus High School gets 20 students since they have the largest population. Kagwin gets 10, Saipan Southern gets 10, and Dial Academy gets 10. And so that's about as, as much as we can handle at this moment. Other islands are on standby. Well, we're hoping to open up Tinian and Road as well. And with the support from uh, Governor Torres, and he said he's 100% behind our program. Uh, we're hoping that with uh, that said, that DLNR will come, for, come forward and uh, put the funds where we need it to uh, support Tinian and Rhoda's uh, Top to Table Clubs. The program also got a big boost last summer from the Gear to Table YouTube host Robert Arrington and the program is seeking more sponsors now. This is for our sponsors who are here to know what we do, what we provide for our students and hopefully continue to support us uh, with our eight month program. One of those invited prospective sponsors, McDonald's Joe Zuzu. When you hear Tasi to Table, what do you think? Well, you know, I, I, I think of uh, people um, living off the sea. And, you know, a long time ago, I kind of reflect back during my younger days where we used to go out and actually fish and make a living out of that. You know, we bring it home, we cook, we feed the family for a day or two, and then when we need it, when we need to, to eat fish again, we go out and catch it. And remember a long time ago, we don't have icebox, so 
you know, I mean, you, those you are the old days, right? And you catch fish for for what you need, right? You don't catch fish for commercial. You you need to support the family with, with it. So that's how I remember and how I relate Tasi, you know, to the table because I grew up in that in that environment. Our fisherman of the week, Luther Taylor, with this dinner catch. Yeah, man. Jump, jump. Come on, jump. Grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Let's go. Here's the wind up and the pick. I don't believe what I just saw! Merry Christmas! Happy New Year! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas and Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Merry Christmas, everybody! See you in Merry Christmas and Happy New Year! Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and Happy New Year! Year. Go-karts, off-roading, and the driving range now open at Marianas Trekking. Go-kart track will be open Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays with 50% off when you book online at MarianasTrekking.com. Hours, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Use the promo code HAFA50 to get your discount. Off-roading is open too by reservation. Come on a 90-minute trail ride that is perfect for families. Book online at marianastrekking.com. Golfers, come practice on the driving range. You can even pay online and we will have the balls waiting for you. Come see us weekends at Marianas Trekking, 323-8735. One of the best things you can do during the pandemic is to get yourself healthy and strong. Gold's Gym is a great place for a tune-up. Wide open workout spaces with dedicated cardio, free weights and machines, personal training, group exercise, and good nutrition. Short-term daytime promo on sale now. Just $159 for three months. Call 233-4000. Our high temperature day, not too high, 84, the low 78, 89% humidity. Our top wind speed at the airport today, 44 miles an hour. That's gale force winds. Tomorrow, mostly sunny with some rain. East winds brisk, 20 to 25 miles an hour. High 86, low 78. Seas are 8 to 10 feet. There is a high surf advisory in effect now. Sunrise tomorrow morning at 641, a low tide at 904 in the morning, followed by high tide at 336, sunset at 554. That's it for Wednesday. Get ready for Christmas. Only two more days to go. Have a great night. See you back here Friday evening.